Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you another watch from San Martin, the SN019-G. This is their latest interpretation of the Submariner, and as you can expect from San Martin, they've done a pretty good job with it. I would like you to know that this watch has been sent to me for free by AliExpress. However, I assure you that this hasn't influenced my opinion about it in any way. If you end up interested in getting this watch, you can do so by visiting the Sun Margin official store on AliExpress. I'll leave all the relevant links and the discount code in the description below. It is available in three different colors and you can also choose between two different movements, the PT5000 or a Celita SW200. The model I'm reviewing today comes with the PT5000, therefore it is cheaper than the Celita variant. It goes for 344 euro. However, the double eleven AliExpress sale is happening right now. And if you use the store coupons and the discount code I've left for you in the comments below, you'll be able to get it for about 290 euro. And that is a pretty good deal in my opinion. San Martin has recently updated their packaging and here it is what it looks like. Their newest models now come in a military green plastic box the top of which resembles the bezel of the watch, while the bottom looks like, well, the case back. Inside, besides the watch, you also find your warranty card, a user's manual, a spring bar tool, a screwdriver, and this mini military dog tag, which you can attach to your keys or to the zipper of your backpack. As always, the first thing I would like us to go through are the dimensions. The case diameter is 42mm, which is the sweet spot for many, the lug to lug is 48 millimeters, but the end links stick out a couple of millimeters on each side. Not a problem at all, unless your wrist is under 15 centimeters in circumference. The thickness is 13 millimeters, and finally the spacing between the lugs is 21 millimeters. Guys, here's how the watch sits on my 17 centimeters or 6.7 inch wrist. It fits me perfectly well, it feels very comfortable, and it has a fair amount of wrist presence, not only visually, but also physically, given that it weighs 160 grams. Prior to this review, I've had it on my wrist for two weeks straight, and all I can say is that it wears and it performs great as a daily driver. When it comes to the design, the watch doesn't bring anything new to the table. It looks extremely similar to a modern sub, and personally speaking, guys, I have no problems with that. However, what's really impressive about this San Martin is the choice of materials, the level of finishing, and the overall build quality. The whole piece is made of 316 AL stainless steel, the crown and the case back are screwed down, and as a result the watch is 200 meters water resistant. The crystal is sapphire, and it does have an AR coating on the underside. Finally, the 120 click bezel has a ceramic insert, which is perfectly aligned. Operating the bezel is also extremely easy, each click is well defined, and the sound is also nice. I would say the action is even better than on the last San Martin I reviewed. It requires very little effort, but it doesn't feel loose by any means. And then the finishing guys, it's simply fantastic. The vertical brushing and the polishing are consistent throughout the case, the bracelet and the clasp as well. I think I said it in my San Martin BB58 homage, but I'll say it again. The finishing is better than what you can see on many watches that cost twice as much, and as soon as you take this watch out of the box, you do realize it. Even the grooves on the bezel are exceptionally well machined. The high polishing on the sides of the case is also decent, it's almost mirror-like, and it's nice to see that the sides of the bracelet links are also polished, which once again gives you a sense of consistency. Speaking of the bracelet, it's really good, very comfortable and very well made. The way these solid end links fit the case is just perfect. I guess a drawback for some people might be that they are 21mm wide, which can be a bit limiting when it comes to finding a nice aftermarket strap. Other than that, I have no complaints. It tapers down to 18mm and then it goes up to 20mm for the clasp. Here is a closer look of it. You can't adjust it on the go, but it's milled and it's well finished. The brushing is the same as on the rest of the watch. It has these very nice beveled edges. 
it's not too thick and it has four micro adjustment points. Now let's have a closer look at the dial. The layout is familiar. You get applied markers, a triangle at 12 o'clock, buttons at 6 and 9 and round markers everywhere else. The date window is placed at 3 o'clock and it is two and a half times magnified and you know I was actually worried that the magnifying glass might be misaligned but thankfully it isn't. On top of that it really helps with the legibility of the date. I guess the most important thing here is that everything looks sharp, the Mercedes hands are nicely finished, the text is crisp, there are no QC issues at all and the BGW9 loom is as good as it gets. As you can see it's evenly applied, San Martin watches typically have great loom and the SN019G is no exception. For a comparison here is my Oris Aquis which also uses Superluminova BGW9 and for that reason there is barely any difference in terms of brightness and longevity between the two. Next let's talk about the PT5000 movement that's inside this San Martin. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and it has 25 joules. It's essentially an ETA clone but way cheaper. According to the manufacturer it should run between plus to minus 12 seconds per day. Over the course of last week mine's been running 8 seconds fast which is a very good performance. As mentioned at the beginning you can also get this watch with a Celita SW200 but you have to pay a hundred euro more if you decide to go for it. It would be nice to see how the PT5000 performs in the long term but so far it looks like it's a reliable and an affordable alternative to its Swiss counterpart. So far so good right? How about any negatives then? Well while not exactly a negative the 21mm lug space might be a deal breaker for some. Not for me though I prefer bracelets over anything else especially when they're as well made as this one. Another thing which I haven't mentioned is the crown. It's a little bit difficult to screw and unscrew due to the rubber gasket that's on the crown tube and that's actually nice as it prevents water from entering the case. But as I said it makes screwing and unscrewing the crown a bit more difficult. However once unscrewed the crown operation itself is very good and the hand winding feels smooth enough. Alright it's time for my final words. Guys this is the third San Martin that I've ever had and also the third one to review here on the channel. The Blue Black Bay 58 homage was excellent and I really enjoyed owning it for a few months. In fact it stood up really well next to my 10 times more expensive Tudor Black Bay 41mm. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already. Then the Green Seiko Marine Master Alex homage that I reviewed a couple of months ago really blew my mind. It has a gorgeous green sun burst dial and a solid build quality just like the rest. In fact I still own it and I do wear it quite a lot. The SN019 is just as good but thanks to its black dial and more mainstream dimensions it's way more versatile than the other two and it has completely changed my opinion about the Rolex Submariner which I've always considered as a very boring watch. Well not anymore. That's the end of today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this San Martin in the comments below. Also if there are any Aliexpress watches that you think deserve my attention please recommend them to me. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing. Take care everyone. I'll see you in the next video.